Hmm. Ooh. <laughs> What's up, good people? It's time for another session of that verbal cardio, man. We back. We back in business, man. It's another glorious, glorious week. We alive. If you listening to this, if you watching me right now, if you hearing me, if you seeing me, that means you alive. And that's a blessing right there. Off the top, off the top, that's a blessing. If you alive to even hear this, to see this, to take it all in, to process it, that's a blessing right there. That means your phone is working, your internet is on. You know what I'm saying? You have vision, you have sight. All these, all these beautiful things. That's a blessing right there, man. Out the gate, I got my co-host in the building, water, H2O, the most precious thing on the planet Earth to us, to our existence. It's precious. It don't get no more precious than this. Everything is from this. Everything is from this. Get in on it, man. Take that water in. Make water a part of your daily necessities out here. No excuses. No cutting corners with the water, man. Get in on it. I don't want to hear no no nitpicky complaints. No none of that. I can't. I I got no I got no remorse. I got no remorse. You hear me? Water is precious, man. Cherish it. I got a mirror on the ones and twos. I got the patron saints in the building, man. Look at this IG live. Look at this IG live. The patron saints about to get the personal shout outs. They about to get the personal shout outs. This part of the Patreon experience, man. Join up. If you're not, if you're not a member, get in on this. Shout out to uh, Mikey McZochi, Alex Charlie, Eshore Sachs, Sapphire Blaze, Brandon Preston, uh, Bilal, Tony Ant, Elijah Green, Sid R, um, Cutie B, Most Sweet May, Chloe Franklin, Two Jelsey, uh, Tanisha Turner, uh, Chaz Ali, Sharon McD, Stony Face Entertainment, uh, King Julius D, Crystal Carradine, Zay Nova, uh, not of this world, Cafe Olay, Deo, Gladys Diaz, Styler, Shayla, KC, Dan Hill, Courtney Davis, Lana, Kristen R, Sean Reed, J. Juan, Michelle Lambert, Crystal Carradine, Miss Ma'am, Austin Leaves, Candid Cammy. Bundy McBuckets. Yo, I like that name, Bundy McBuckets. Ryan. Um, Jamal B, Cutie B. And more, man. Aomi, A. Owens, Eric Payne, Chef Matt Owens. Um, I appreciate y'all, man. Roslyn, Crystal, Rock. I appreciate y'all, man. Shout out to the patron saints. They are very much a part of this podcast now. An uh, integral ingredient, if you will. Um, they give me great topics. They give me great questions. They are part of the family now, man. The fabric of verbal cardio is the patron saints. So happy birthday, Crystal. Aries. Happy birthday to the Aries community. If you are Aries, man, shout out to all my Aries out there, man. The Ram. Fire sign, ram, out here cramming it, cramming it in life. If you were Aries, you better be cramming out here. You got horns, don't waste them. If you were Aries out here, you got to go for what's yours. And that's what rams do, man. They go for that cram. They going head first, head first into it with full confidence, full strength, full power. I want my Aries out here moving just like that. Go in there. Get in there. Put your head to work. Get in that head space of getting it done. Ambition. Courage. Confidence. Aries, man. I want you out here cramming your way into the things that you want and desire out here. Boom. Shout out to the Aries, man. Fire signs. Um, We in the building, man. It's going down out here, man. They looking for Diddy, man. They pulling up on Diddy strong, man. They pulling up on all his properties, busting in, busting in. 
Diddy, what you got up in here, man? What you got going on up in here? Sex trafficking. We looking for the evidence. We grabbing your electronics. We busting up in your properties, and we going to find out some stuff. Diddy, Sean Puffy Combs, never in a million years, never in a million years, back back in the 90s, back in the 90s. Let's, let's take it back to the 90s, man. Bad boy, Sean Combs. He was working for Uptown back in the day, you know, working with Mary J. Blige and them before. This is before Bad Boy now. He working with he working with Father MC. You know what I'm saying? Mary J. Blige, they all working together. They vibe and they flowing. You know, Bad Boy Records comes out. We got Craig Mack. A lot of people overlook Craig Mack and his impact. A lot of people be focused on Biggie with good reason. With good reason, it's cool to focus on Biggie because, I mean, come on. Biggie was Biggie. And shout out to Andre Harrell, rest in peace. But Craig Mack was the one that was getting that bad boy attention early on with, with Flavor in Your Ear. With Flavor, in your, with Flavor in Your Ear was one of the biggest tracks when it came out. Flavor in Your Ear was fire. Biggie's album actually had a slow burn. You know what I'm saying? Juicy was juicy. Juicy was juicy. But the album itself had a slow burn, you know what I'm saying? So it, it built up, and then it surpassed Craig Mack and everything he was doing. But that that Craig Mack, rest in peace, Craig Mack, that flavor in your ear, though, that was that was the shit. And so, uh, so a lot of people like to overlook that Craig Mack. You know, the album uh, "Funk the World" it ended up going gold. Um, and he had "Get Down" was a follow up single. But eventually, Biggie became, you know, a superstar. So, you know, and and we seeing P. Diddy more, Puff Daddy at the time. We seeing him more and more. He all up in the videos, and he's just everywhere. You know, he was just all over the place. And he became his own, like, personality, rapper, if you want to call him that. Um, He was just everywhere, you know what I'm saying? Total, 112, Faith Evans, Notorious B.I.G., Craig Mack. Uh, Carl Thomas, Mace. And then, you know, he's doing his own thing with the No Way Out album, Puff Daddy and the Family. Who you know do it better? He was just everywhere, just killing. Bad Boy was on a roll. And it was just like, yo, they out here. And you looking at them, you looking at them and you like, yo, man, they living the life. They flashy, they doing this, man. It looked like, it looked like a, a good ass time. Junior Mafia wasn't on Bad Boy. It, it was a good ass time. Puff Daddy looked like a good time, man. He be dancing, you know what I'm saying? Saying, take that, man. They be wearing fresh clothes. You probably wanted to be either Mace or Puff Daddy. You know what I'm saying? And then, you know, he keeping it going. He trying to keep it going, bringing in other bands, you know what I'm saying? Still putting out his solo albums, then changing his name to P. Diddy. Um,. Going through all that, making big budget videos, you know, probably unpaying, underpaying his artists. Shout out to the locks. The locks was really like the first ones to let you know, like, yo, man, we ain't feeling it over here, man. We not getting taken care of. We ain't feeling it over here. They messing up our image. It ain't working out, man. Get us the hell up out of here. Shout out to the locks for having that courage. To be like, we want out. We want out. This is before social media or anything, man. They were like, we want out of here, shorty. This, this ain't what the locks is doing. What's up, Shan? This ain't what the locks is all about, man. Get us up out of here, man. And so now, you know, and with Mace being outspoken, you just hearing a lot of a lot of a lot of people and artists and stuff like that was just like. Yo, man, we not getting done right over there. Black Rob. So now, you know, now all this stuff is coming to the light about what Diddy is doing, what he been doing. And you know, you you heard about the Diddy parties. You, everybody was talking about the the Diddy parties, the all white parties. It was it was the stuff of legend. It was like, man, and y'all know y'all wanted to go. Y'all know y'all wanted to go. Everybody was. It was a who's who. Everybody wanted to go to the Diddy party. You wanted to see what was cracking at the Diddy party. Don't act like you wasn't. Don't act like you wasn't curious. Don't act like you wouldn't have went if you was invited. Let's not act like that. People was going. 
the all white, the Diddy party was the it was the thing to do. It was it was Club Fifty Four. I wanted to go. Yes, I wanted to go. Yes, I wanted to go to the Diddy party. Every see everybody later on. You want to act like you? Oh, I knew the whole time. I was yeah. I knew something wasn't right. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. You wanted to go. You wanted to go before you heard about all the extra shenanigans. You still wanted to go, even w- even with the extra shenanigans. You were like, well, I'm I'm not gonna be involved in the shenanigans, but I want to go just to see what what's going on, just to see what's happening. And the majority of you back then, most of y'all would have pulled up. Everybody's saying, nope, I don't believe you. Now, if you if you were never a fan of P Diddy, then I believe you. But if you if you were a fan of what was going on, you'd be like, man, man, I want to see what's happening. Because I'd be curious, man. I'd be curious to see what's going on in places. Because I, I know my limitations. I know my personal limitations. I know myself. I know what I'm going to do and what I'm not going to do. So regardless of what's going on at a particular party, I might see some things. I'd be like, yo, that's wild. And then I just, I just record it in my mind. That shit is wild. You want in on this? I'm good. Like I wanted, you heard about Club Fifty Four and everything that was going on in Club Fifty Four back in the day. I I wanted to I wanted to go in there and see what the legendary talk was all about. Sure, I wanted to go to Club Fifty Four. What's happening here? Let me experience. Let me experience things. And I don't need to experience necessarily myself doing some wild shit that I'm gonna be ashamed of. You gotta know yourself. But I, I, I'm also like, I'm a curious soul. It's some things I, would, I wouldn't mind seeing for myself. And so, um, yeah, Studio 54, if you're not familiar with Studio 54, it was like the place to be in the 70s, early 80s. It was this club that was like super hard to get into, but it was like a who's who. Everybody, everybody that was anybody during that time frame was at Studio 54. It was like a legendary nightclub in New York City. And it was just like, yo, you had to be somebody to get up in there. And it was cocaine. It was sex. It was, it was going down in Studio 54. That was like the thing. And mind you, you know, I, I was a baby and, and I was born in 77. So, of course, you know, I wasn't going to be at Studio 54. But when you hear about the stories and you're just like, yo, man, Michael Jackson was there. Every Everybody that was anybody was there. Of course I want to go in and just see it and just be like, this is what y'all talking about. You want to you wanna see some, some wild, epic shit firsthand. I don't want to see everything secondhand. Some things I want to experience. I want to be like, yeah, I was there. It was musty in there. I want to. I want to be able to give my take on some legendary stuff. It was musty. I was at the I Have a Dream speech. I was out there. It was hot as hell. Mosquitoes. And a lot of people don't know this. Martin Luther King was bombing at first, but then you know he hit that I Have a Dream part, and then that's when the that's when the crowd woke up. But before that, they was they was bombing. Like you never you never know. You know what I'm saying? So it's it's certain things <laughs> you want to be in on. But um yeah, so now Diddy, all of these accusations and you know, allegations are coming out about Diddy. And then with the Cassie thing. It's a lot. And people and people thought he he fled, you know, since his stuff since his house got raided. They thought he fled. They was like, yo, his his private jet is on an island over here. We don't know if he on the if he on the jet or not. So it's like, and I said in the comment section on one post, I was like, yo, man, that nigga, that nigga on the space shuttle. He on a space shuttle, man. <laughs> I'm sure that if, if, if Diddy could leave the planet right now, I'm sure he would. I'm sure if there was a colony set up on Mars where they living lavishly out there, he would be like, you know what? I'm going to get on this space shuttle and get the hell up out of here. I'm gone, y'all. <laughs> it's been real, y'all. Out of here. He would, he would be, he would book the first flight to Mars right here, right now. 
No matter the price, I'm paying it. So I don't know how all of this is going to turn out. Can't stop, won't stop. But I do know this no diddy thing that y'all are just shoving down everybody's throat. No diddy, no diddy. I'm tired of it. I'm tired of it. Oh, IG Live. The patron saints want me to cut this live feed off. If you want to, if you want to get in on this, join the Patreon. How do you join my Patreon? Click the link in my bio, become a Patreon member. You can see the rest of this episode live. If you don't want to join the Patreon, which is fine, which is fair, you can you can just see this episode tomorrow. New episodes of Verbal Cardio drop every week. Don't be left out. Don't be left out. You don't have to be left out. Join the Patreon. Get in on it. And, jo- and join. Don't join the free Patreon. You won't get access to the live podcast, none of that. So I'm, I'm cutting the live feed up. Sorry, y'all. But y'all, y'all don't have to, to do this. Y'all could, y'all could be a part of this. Y'all could be a part of the patron sainthood. All you got to do is click the link in my bio. Join up. Yeah, y'all. I'm out. Um, but yeah, man. I, I'm very curious to, to how this Diddy stuff is going to play out. You know, the, the cast and characters, it's just. But I would have never foreseen this back when, when Diddy was in his prime. I would have never, I would have never foreseen any of this. At all. At all. Um, so I'm, I'm very curious. I'm just like, man, this is wild. This is wild. And I know, I know, Patriots Saints, y'all be like, man, why you give them so much content? I want, I want people in the IG live to really feel what they're gonna miss. You know what I'm saying? You, you gotta, you gotta give them a dose, cause they was, they, they was in here getting comfortable. They was in here like, yeah, we really in here, and then, then they start to forget, and then they start having a good time. Yo, I'm enjoying it, and then you cut them off. You cut them off. You know what I'm saying? You got to you got to give them you got to entice. You got to give them the free samples. Free samples, man. You got to give it to them. And once they get a, a certain amount of free samples, they just like, "Yo, I got to get in on this." So so let let them cook in the free sample for a while. Then then we cut them off. Then we cut them off. Trust me, y'all trust me on this. One. Because right now they missing out. They missing out right now. They missing out. And we in here, we still talking. We having a good time. We rubbing each other's booties in here. Pause, press play. We in here building as a community, as the patron sainthood, the bakery, man. We in here, right here, right now. No, nah, ain't no whoa, man. No, nah, don't say no diddy, man. I'm sick of it. The sound, it feels forced. The no diddy is forced. And what do we say? What, what does the no diddy mean? What does the no diddy mean? How does it apply? When do we when do we when do we incorporate the no diddy? How do we use it? Y'all break that down for me. When when do we use the no diddy? So instead of so it replaces no homo, which I've already I've already stopped saying no homo a long time ago. So no, so Zakia says no diddy to me means no rape involved. Okay. Yeah, it replaces rape. But how often are we talking about rape? Because I feel like people are saying no diddy when 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 rape is not even the topic. They just be like, no diddy. They saying it's the new no homo. The new no homo is pause. No diddy is the new pause. Okay. Why why we don't need a new pause? We don't need a new pause. 
Pause is pause. Pause is legit. Pause. Pause is legit. But for me, pause to me is anything sexual. I use pause like that. If anything, if anything sexual is said, I say pause. And it's not just for me, it's not just exclusive to a homosexual, you know, activities or none of that. It's anything sexual, hetero, homosexual, omnisexual, whatever the sexuals, anything sexual, I say pause. And then I say press play. <laughs> but like, that's, that's how I use it. So like, if I'm talking to a girl and I say something, yeah, we went deep. Pause. Though it had nothing to do with, you know, it's all about the, the sexuality of it. Like that sounded sexual when you say, yeah, we went deep. I'm like, oh, oh, pause. So I say pause to women all the time. So that's what, but there's no ditty, man. I'm not feeling it. I'm not embracing it. It's like, it's like when, it's like when I was doing, I used to do a uh, slug bug. Remember slug bug? Whenever you see a Volkswagen, you in the car with somebody, you punch them twice. Slug bug, slug bug yellow. And then you just, you punch whoever you with in the car. Slug bug blue. We used to do that all the time. And then uh, my friend was trying to force the PT punch, whatever, for the PT cruiser. He was like, yeah, man, we're going to do the the the, the, PT, cru uh, the PT punch. I'm like, nah, man, nah, we're we, we not doing this. We, you don't come in here with extra vehicles trying to trying to force something with the PT Cruiser, man. Ain't no, the PT Cruiser ain't the slug bug. You know what I'm saying? Don't don't come in here with the extras, man. Just force forcing something else. Look out. So I never embraced the PT punch buggy or whatever. Nah, man. Slug bugs. That's what we doing. Slug bug yellow. Slug bug blue. So I feel like this no diddy thing is like that coming in here with the PT cruiser energy. Like, look out, man. Watch out. You're forcing it. But let me pay the bills up in here, man. Let me pay the bills real quick, man. Let me pay the bills real quick. Eating better is easy with factors, delicious, ready to eat meals. Every fresh, never frozen meal is chef crafted. Dietitian approved and ready to go in just two minutes. You'll have over 35 different options to choose from every week, including Calorie Smart, Protein Plus, and Keto. Also, there are more than 60 add ons to help you stay fueled up and feeling good all day long. What are you waiting for? Get started today and get after your goals. Two-minute meals. You can fuel up fast with Factors restaurant quality meals that are ready to heat and eat wherever you are, whenever you be. They got pancakes, they got smoothies, and more. Discover a wide variety of easy options for the entire day like breakfast, midday bites, and more. No prep, no mass meals. Factor, oh, no mess meals. I'm sorry, not no mass meals. No mess meals. Factor meals are ready to heat and eat, so there's no prepping, cooking, or cleanup needed. Flexible for your schedule. Get as much or as little as you need by choosing your meals every week. Plus, you can pause or reschedule your deliveries anytime. Factor is the perfect solution if you're looking for fast, premium options with no cooking required. You can sign up and save. We've done the math. Factor is less expensive than takeout, and every meal is dietitian approved to be nutritious and delicious. Factor is a good time. Y'all saw my refrigerator on my Instagram yesterday. Factor was all up in that thing. You know what I'm saying? Head to factormeals.com slash verbal50 and use the code verbal50 to get 50% off. 50% is half, y'all. Half off? Half off of anything is a great deal. If you're getting half off of anything, that's a good-ass deal. Give me half off on these taxes. You know what I'm saying? Use the code VERBAL50 to get 50% off. The code VERBAL50 at factormeals.com slash VERBAL50 to get 50% off. It will greatly help the show, man. Get in on this, y'all. Get in on this. You can't be half off. You cannot beat that, man. 
Don't forget to use verbal 50, though. That verbal 50 code is going to get you what you want. Um, I just want to say I appreciate y'all. I appreciate everybody that listens to Verbal Cardio, everybody that watches it, everybody that comments, everybody that likes, everybody that 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 pulls up live when we do this. I appreciate every molecule of y'all, man. Thank you. Because I'll be wanting to give up. I'll be wanting to be like, let me take something off my plate. I'll be wanting to take stuff off my plate. And I'll be looking at Verbal Cardio and I'll be like, yo, if I got to take something off the plate, I'll be looking at Verbal Cardio. I'll be like, even though Verbal Cardio is the space for me to, to get my shit off, solo is it's the it's my solo album if you will but i'd be like man because if i don't feel like it's growing if, if it's not growing and thriving i'll just be losing i'll be like man maybe i can just maybe i can just tap out and you know take some off my plate but here we are here we are yet again so I, you know but i appreciate the people that love verbal cardio, the people that that pull up, the people that comment, the people that share, the people that like, I appreciate that. Um, Kendrick Lamar, he was featured on a track with Future, and you know he came at Drake and Cole with well, a Drake and Cole song, is what he came at. Now, a lot of people, I've just been peeping comments. And I posted a video about, you know, how I like my rap beef. I like my rap beef very, like, specific in names named. And, like, yo, man, ain't no question. Ain't no question. I don't like to think too much when I hear this. But a lot of people are like, you know, he really didn't diss Cole or anything like that. And I don't, I don't know, cause, cause you know, J Cole gave Kendrick props. He's saying he called them the big three, and they are the big three. Let's be real. Drake, Kendrick, and Cole are the big three. But when it comes to um, sales, consistency, bars, skill, they are the big three. Yeah, there are other rappers out here that are popping, but they don't they don't have they don't have all these elements. They might have swaggy man. Future, for example. Future is one of the biggest artists out ever. But does he have lyrical skill? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. He's got the numbers. He's got the consistent numbers. He's got the vibes. He's got the hits. But lyrically. future nah he not even in the conversation and what Cole Kendrick and Drake have they got the lyrics they got the lyrics they got the lyrical skill oh shit my phone is on they got the lyrical skill and they had the numbers also I mean Drake's numbers are just ridiculous out of the big three, Drake has the the bigger numbers. You know what I'm saying? Drake has the bigger numbers than than most people in music. But Kendrick and J. Cole have some fire numbers as well. So they got the numbers, the lyrics, they they just have these. So they are the big three. Um so and you know, Kendrick was like, man, fuck that, man. It's just big me, goddammit. Fuck the big three. It's just big me. Boom! And he cut the, he threw his mic down. And he left the studio. Kendrick said all that and walked out the studio. They was just in there like, oh shit, no. you know what I'm saying? He heated the booth up real quick and walked out. He didn't even drive away from the studio. He laid that verse down and walked home. Even if it was out of state, he walked home after that in slow motion. So now everybody's everybody's talking. Everybody's talking now. It's like, yo, you heard that Kendrick joint? Kendrick be doing this, man. He's done it before. That control verse had everybody talking. And it was it was a thing where for me the control thing was, I feel like it was a compliment. 
Like if if I was named, let, let's say I was a rapper, and Kendrick said mentioned me in the control verse. Let's say it was a comedian, right? Comedian, he killing, and I'm coming for everybody. And he'd be like, he naming these comedians, and he names me, and I'm just like, hey man, you think, you think I'm one of the ones? You okay? Respect. All right. It, it's part, it's partial challenge, but it's also respect. And so I would take that as a compliment. And I'd be like, all right, so this particular comedian, this rapper, is not bullshitting. He coming for next. And he holds us in high regard. That's how I'm gonna take it. I'm not gonna take it no further than that. I'm not gonna be dis I'm not gonna be offended and feel disrespected as a man or as an artist. I'm just like, all right, he respects what I got going, but he's also competing. And so I'm like, all right, bet that. I'm not gonna be in my feelings about it. What you think about the Kendrick verse, Amir? I know you gotta say it. Let's least. go. <laughs> <laughs> I love I, and as far as music that I listen to the yeah. most uh-huh. Drake first for sure okay it'd be Kendrick second out of the big three and then Cole would be like dead last right. for me personally I just never for you some never. reason just never resonated with me never connected uh-huh. I just, his delivery just be like enough I'm tired like I, I don't know this ain't work for me <laughs> so when Kendrick get on a song I, I'm not mad at it yeah. a lot of people think that Kendrick was he kind of like blindsided Cole, like, why are you going at Cole? And I was like, right. but he he did, like, the way Cole went about it was in a co- competitive approach, a first-person shooter. Right. He said, you know, this is the big three, they argue about it. I feel like Muhammad Ali. Right. The Spider-Man meme is me looking at Drake, which means you excluded Kendrick in that part mm. because it's saying that me and Drake, we're on the same level here. Yeah. So I was like, okay, that's how y'all feel. And you know Kendrick's coming back. Like, I don't know why anybody <laughs> thought differently. I was shocked that when I heard Kendrick on there, because I was like, Kendrick with... Kendrick or Future makes sense. Kendrick on a Metro beat never happened before. So I was like... Oh, that's the first time it's happened? First time. So I was like, no, no, no. He did. He was on a remix for Mask Off, actually. Okay, okay. The, yeah, but that was, that was different. Uh-huh. But uh, I was like, oh. And then I heard that. And I was like, oh, he's he's going all the way in. He has, he's, he's doing his flows. He's, he's very LA. He's very California. Yeah. And he's coming at them. And I was like, okay. And then he he went at that. And I was like, all right. And then he went at Drake. And he, you, for all the dogs, you know, all the yeah. K's and the nines, you know, pet cemetery. I was like, I mean, all right, we got to see what they say now. Right. It's a thing. It's a game of response. It's competitive. Kendrick has always been like, if you're going to want to be the best, right. you got to prove that you're going to be the you, best. You got to compete. Low and key. I'm, I'm not mad at it. And I don't think anybody should be shocked. It's, and what I don't like is just seeing people so stuck in fandom that they want to get upset for the artist yeah. about the stuff or whatever. Like, it's competitive. That don't mean they got to hate him. Like, the control verse, like the way Drake took it, he, he took it more of like a, you know, he was like a diss or something. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't feel like control verse was a diss. Me was, neither. Like how you said, I felt like it was props. He, right. If he named you, he he showed respect. If he Absolutely. didn't name you, you should be more upset. Yeah. That's what Literally. I'm saying. Like, man, I ain't one of the ones yeah. you, you mentioned. I would be offended if I wasn't mentioned. Yeah. So it shouldn't have been anything like that. But it's, you know, every, if you're, if you are actually a fan of rap, if you actually listen to rap, you know it's a competitive sport. That don't mean I don't like you. That don't right. mean I hate you. I hate your guts. Right. But if I'm trying to be the best at this moment in time, I don't care about what all the other stuff you're doing. I'm going right. to show you why I'm the best. You did that. That's fire. I'm leveling up. I'm, I'm doing right. the next up. The buddy buddy stuff is cool. Yeah. Y'all on the outside, like going on tour together and stuff like that, that's great. But when it comes to like, you, if you want to actually throw jabs and stuff like that, don't, re, don't be surprised if somebody comes back. Yeah. That's just, that's always how it's been. Right, it's n- it's nothing new. So I I the the fandom is what's really killing me. Like mm. seeing people be like, I'm taking this side and pick. Stop picking a side and just listen. Right. Enjoy the music. It's entertainment. We're being entertained. Right. So just sit back, relax, let the stuff play out. We don't know these people, man. Come on. People people going they gonna pick them sides. They can't help it. Cause I know I was a side picker with uh, Nas and Jay. Yeah. I pick. I was like Nas. I picked the side. We all, tough. but the thing, we all will have like somebody that we're leaning more towards. Right. That that's fair. Yeah. I just think like extremely going out like, ah right, man, look at this. And you mean he be putting up the numbers? I mean, who got more Grammys? Yeah, Kendrick yeah, yeah. got a Pulitzer. Drake got no more number ones. But I'm like, bro, who cares? Man? <laughs> who got a Pulitzer? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's real though. And like for me, I love the fact that uh, I don't. Me personally, I don't know what Drake is gonna do. Like, I feel like Drake is very, he can come off very passive-aggressive with his 
with his disses and beefs unless it gets to a, a push a T type level where it's just like, all right, yeah, I'm going to be direct. Yeah. Like that. I don't like the passive aggressive low key stuff. I like more in your face. We talking about, that's why, that's why the push a T this blew me away because it was very personal. Yeah. It was just like, oh shit, man. <laughs> this, this is, this is something else. And so I feel like Cole is going to respond. Because Cole has been on a great tear lately, and I feel like I feel like Cole has been wanting smoke for a while, just with somebody. I feel like all three of them have, just not with each other necessarily. That's what I mean. Like I want it to be, because they got to level up. Yeah. Like the other cast they might shoot at have been like lower tier in terms of yeah lyrical. Yeah. And so I feel like. When somebody like Kendrick challenges you, you know you got to bring yeah. the A game. You can't just You can't just snuff you can't just snuff it off. No, you can't yeah. just come in with some lazy bars and some some little innuendos. You got to you got to come with it. Yeah. And so um I don't know what Drake's gonna do. They they posted that clip of him on stage talking about, you know, yeah. I'm a man and this and that. And he was just like, All right, but but the bars though. Yeah. I'm sure he'll do something being on tour kinda yeah. You know, trying to preserve that energy for the stage. You can't try to take it to, right. the, to the booth. So I know he'll say something because he usually does anyway. I feel and, like Cole um, is writing right now. Yeah, because Cole's not on tour anymore. Right. I feel like they're done with their little joint tour, right? I think so. I feel like he writing then he brought in right now. Yeah, like Dirk and Lil Wayne, I think. So, yeah. Yeah, he's probably, he's probably cooking up something. Yeah. Um, People trying to speculate like when it'll happen or whatever. I also don't like... Uh, like I said, the the fandom thing, but more so like people being like, "Oh man, this rapper can't do this, and this person can't do this." I was like, these guys were brought up under the generation of people who were thriving in the so called golden era of rap. Like right. these dudes have been under Dr. Dre, uh, under Jay Z, under mm -hmm. Lil Wayne. All of these guys have gone at people and done of those kind of right. things, and they all, if they are, like I said, they're the big three of this mm -hmm. this generation of rap, or this is previous generation of rap at this point. Right. But there's no way you can't sit here and say that they're not capable of being able to carry on a beef or anything like that. Like, right. no, not one of them. All three of them can stand on their own and do their own thing, 100%. Right. People will be like, Drake can't hold the candle to Kendrick. He can get there. Kendrick is a, on a lyrically a, a different level, but Drake can right. definitely hold his own. Yeah. Cole can also do the seen? same thing as well. Yeah. He knows how to do it. He's just that he doesn't. That's the right. disappointing part about it. Yeah. We know he can rap. Right. We've seen it, but he just he just he decides to you know I'm gonna do it the way I want to do it, and yeah. that's not gonna resonate with everybody else. Right. So, yeah, it it's gonna it's one of those things like it's, it's people talking about rap. It's exciting. People looking up mm. you know where the samples coming from and right. all of this and all these references and stuff and doing that. Cool. This is great. This is great for rap. He put itself. a battery in something. Yeah. Because it, it's not stale. No matter how you feel, it's not stale. Yeah. And so it's just like, oh shit. Yeah. Now now we now we we excited about something. Now we looking forward to something. And came out of nowhere. Like I, I didn't know what Kendrick was up to because he, he's 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 the most low key of the three. J. Cole's pretty low key, but I feel like he's been doing a lot of features lately. Yeah, so I feel he, like we see him. He jumped back in. Kendrick it will hide, work with his cousin, yeah. and then just, you know, and this. And I then say, it's and just in order for them to diss, diss you, you have to be a fan of them. Like, I think that's the other yeah. part about it, too. You Kendrick, Drake, Cole, they all can go at each other, this and that. Mm -hmm. But in order for you to know that somebody says something about you, you have to listen to their music. Yeah. Like, you you have to. And and if you're going to go at them, you respect the level of music that they create. Right. So I think that's another part about it. Like, I, people aren't dissecting their their like their fandom thoughts when they're actually making these judgments man that person's not that good i don't care about that and that's like that's mm. not true that artist is showing you that that's not true right push a t could hate drake and drake hate push a t but since they're going at each other they respect each other for their ability to do what they do they right. know that they're capable of doing that mm. that's just across the board right if anybody comes at you they res they obviously have a level of respect for you that they would decide to step out of their way and give you that much attention. Right. When they don't, that's that's more so like you're not paying me any mind. Well, then it's just you don't you don't you don't rock with me. Or they'll say it as like that person's scared. It's like maybe they just looked at you and was like, nah, <laughs> you yeah. know. So they res they they so, respect each other and they listen to each other. With that, let's say, let's say Drake doesn't fire back. Hmm. You think that's fear? Because he is because it's Cause definitely it, yeah. not. Yeah. Uh, I don't respect you type of thing. Yeah. 
Because I don't think there's a rapper alive that doesn't respect what Kendrick is. Yeah, for sure. So if Drake goes the, I don't, you know how he ended off the push of T beef. Yeah, if he goes that route here, would you say he was scared? I think it. I think it'd be more like yeah, he uh unnecessarily going like direct approach. I could see him taking a different route because even then, if you listen to Scorpion, he definitely was addressing some stuff on there as yeah. well. Mm-hmm. It was more of a you know like subtle kind of things. Yeah, but he, I mean, even Drake will admit that he lost that. Yeah. So he hasn't went up there with Kendrick yet, so I can't say for for certain, like right. you know, what degree he'll take it to. Because mm-hmm. um, it could easily be like, you mentioned my name, now you got a number one. Like, look at that. Like that's that's the Drake effect. That's yeah. what people say. Like that's the Drake effect. Mm-hmm. You mentioned my name, you the hottest shit. So yeah, he can't, but he can't sit there and be like he he doesn't respect them or anything like that either. No. So, because we know, yeah, he's like if you say you don't respect Kendrick as a as a rapper, you may not be. I don't a know fan if he's gonna do a full song though. That's the thing. I think he's expecting to do a full, full song. song, and yeah. I was like, I, I think that's a stretch. Yeah, full songs are rare. I yeah. feel like, and it might not be something that he does. Like it could be a thing where it could be like a while before we actually see him do something. It could be just a part of a project, like he's done the other stuff, but it yeah. just lives in the in a in a space instead of it just being like a like how you did the the Meek Mill thing, like how you came at yeah. him. Whatever. I don't think that's gonna happen. I want um, a full song. I would like to see a full song too. Yeah. But the the thing about this is that since Future is a hit maker, this song is going is obviously going to chart, but right. it's also going crazy in the clubs because of the beat. Yeah. This is not an escapable song. So you're going to hear that part and people are going to play the Kendrick part. Yes. For sure. So it's a little bit of that Drake formula, like how back to back was like, oh, you back to back dropping. It was in the club, <laughs> it, was it was on the, the radio, <laughs> it got Grammy nominated. Like, bro, like that this yeah. song could potentially be one of those. Right. So it's a little bit of it's it's different. It's it's a it's a flip side for Drake for sure. Any other <laughs> stuff is like, yeah, we're gonna add it, blah, blah, blah. I'm gonna yeah. win because I got the radio now. It's like you in a tough spot, my boy. But yeah, like I said, it's 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 exciting to see, man. Yeah. I'm I'm definitely interested in the future of this. No pun intended on future, but definitely interested to see where this goes. Um, and out of the big three for me, how I would rank them, Drake is last for me. Um, I go back and forth with Cole and Kendrick all the time. Um, because they, they they just be switching spots for me as far as who's at the top. Um, I feel like I connect with Cole the most, though, in terms of just like uh, the content and the flow. It's just I feel like I rotate Cole more. So I would give the slight edge. It's not even a real edge, but the slight. If I got, if I gotta rank them. It would go Cole, Kendrick, Drake for me. Uh, but those, those two right there, like they're both like, they're, Drake and Cole to me, I mean uh, Kendrick and Cole to me are like a twin-headed dragon for me in terms of like rappers in this day and age. Um, they are the twin-headed dragon. They are just, you know, I'll put them both in my, I think they're both in my top 10 now at this point. They're both in my top 10 all-time list. I think they're both in there now. So, um, yeah. I'm intrigued for sure. 100%. I'm excited, though. I'm just like, man, where is this going to lead? Where are we going to end up? How's it going to end? So yeah, it's all all unexpected. But it, looking back, listening to this stuff and being like, it it kind of it kind of made sense. Mm. It just didn't, you know, people just don't know when because Kendrick does disappear for a while and then just pop back up randomly. Right. So, but I, when the people were like, "Why? Why did Cole catch straight? And I was like, "The Spider Man meme is me looking at Drake. Super Bowl is just two people facing off. I like, yeah, that, that's enough for me to be like. Okay, you you included me in the big three, but you made you basically said I was three. I mean, but did he just say that just because they was on the track together? 
And yeah, did they, it and, and did it they offer Kendrick a spot on that track? I I highly doubt it. Yeah. Because I know Drake and Kendrick don't, like, they've had, like, a Cold War kind of thing. That's true. Because um, I know, like, before, like, Drake wouldn't say uh, Kendrick's name on uh, the For Free song. He's like, and like that boy from Compton said, you know, so yeah. Kendrick kind of went ahead and about that. He was upset about that. But then mm. there was like a video of Kendrick Lamar singing that song too at one point. I don't know if it was a joke, yeah. but I believe there was a video of him like driving a car and he was singing that song. So it was like, again, respect. Mm. But then also last year when Baby Keem made, him and Baby Keem had the Hillbilly song. Yeah. That was a remix of Sticky, which Drake made. Uh-huh. So I don't, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's like, it's things like that. Like I said, there's a level of respect there that they care about. Like, if you're going to remix somebody's song or interpolate their lyrics or anything like that, you're going to owe them some credit. You owe them some royalties. And the whole theme of the song has a sound that sounded like what Drake did on his album. So, I don't, you know, it's one of those things like, I don't, I don't know, man. Like, yeah. When was the last time they worked together? Was it on uh, Kendrick's debut? Uh, Yeah. Good Kid, Mad City. Yeah. That's the last time they was on. no. Um, the uh fucking problem song, ASAP Rocky. That was after uh, yeah, that, that was, was at after the, Good I think, Kid. Think that was at the end of 2012. Okay, right up in right at the beginning of 2013, I think. Yeah, I think that's the last time they did a song together. Because then later that year, then Control dropped before Big Sean's album came out. Okay, and then ever that since was then a while it's been ago. Yeah. yeah, yeah, ten, ten over to 10 me years now. to me on that on that fucking problem song by ASAP. I like Drake's verse the best. I agree. He just kind of he just kind of maneuvered through it a little bit better. The way he rolled the beat on that, his verse to me was was the best. Surprisingly, I thought you know it was gonna be, but I, I like Drake's verse the best on that song because he he rolled the beat perfectly. Yeah, and I was just like, yo, that flow with the beat was just it, it was it it wasn't an ounce of fat in in Drake's verse on that one. Yeah, in my opinion. Um, so I like I, we. Yeah, everybody also talks about Kendrick Lamar, but it's more like it's that that people you're like, girl, you know, uh, I know you want this dick. Like it's yeah, it you know, it's, it's it's this it's just those things. Like Kendrick was a little, he was a little more loose on there, which I like to see Kendrick yeah. be a little loose, but but I, it it didn't really it didn't really hit like that for me. Um, but I feel like Drake came in. It was just like yo, no fat, lean, boom, pile out of there. Um, it says also his pocket too. I think that was made by Forty with the what was it a Leah sample? I think is that a Leah sample? It's a Leah sample on that song, or is this a different I, song? I think that song. I think in the background, it's a very like a vocals. I think that's oh a Leah. shit, but it's Forty problem. Yeah, but Forty made that beat, so that's his. Oh producer. wow. So I mean, that's that's kind of like his. You know, that's kind of like his that's, thing. Yeah. So familiar territory, kind of like home court advantage. Yeah, but yeah, I think that is the lot that is the last time that they ever did something together so and 2 Chainz he just did the chorus right yeah yeah 2 Chainz was on the chorus 2 Chainz killed the chorus though don't slip don't slip I said I don't and Cole and Kendrick when's the last time they did this song together damn I don't know and they don't even you know it ain't like they don't rock with each other but I don't think they've done anything right either. Cause they've never been on each other's albums, right? I know, I know, I know. I know sure Cole, Cole produced High Power on Section Eighty. Yeah. Okay. And then, uh, but I don't think they're. Yeah, no. I don't Black Friday. They saying Black Friday in the. Uh, when did, the when, was when that? did Black Friday come out? That had to be like twenty fifteen, fourteen. Shit. That was a long time ago. I mean, even then, like, if you look at Drake and Cole, they didn't have a song together for a, a long time, too. A very long time. They had, like, Jodeci Freestyle, then it was nothing mm. for the longest. And then they just started doing stuff recently. The DJ Khaled track with Big Crit. DJ Khaled. I don't know what's on that is. DJ Khaled got so many albums. Man. Right. <laughs> Tale of Two Cities. They remixed each other's stuff when they were releasing a joint album. I remember those remixes. I remember that where yeah. they did each other's beats. I remember people talking about them supposed joint album too. Yeah, never, never came about. That's, that's what we wanted. 
We wanted it, but we never got it, shouted. So you probably won't ever see a, a Future and Drake together either. That's done. Well, here not we even, are. Not even because of the Kendrick thing, but apparently there's been a, a beef with them since 2022. What was they beef about? It's, it's supposedly over a woman. Which, oh, here which, we go. Which wouldn't be surprising, knowing these guys. But they they maneuver through the same clubs, mess around with the same woman. And I think Drake threw some jabs at um, Future on her loss that kind of went over everybody's head. Yeah. And then it's like one thing, like you look back, and then the first track on on Future's new project, he was saying like, you know, he was pillow talking, you did this, blah, 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 mm. da, da, da. Here we go. And they haven't done anything. They haven't collaborated since 2022. Yeah. So. Hmm. It's so messy. Yeah, it is messy. Everybody like, unfought, like Rick Ross is supposedly not, not rocking with Drake. And then Drake brings up one of his girls that he was, that Rick Ross used to be with the front row and the, the stage and stuff. It's like, it's it's a lot. So, yeah. It's getting messy, y'all. It's getting messy. As long as we can get some good music and good bars out of the deal, sign me up. I'm listening. I'm listening. All right. Let's go to these questions. What y'all got up in here? Mr. Baker, this is from Emil Hardy. Do you like roller coasters? Uh, let's go to Magic Mountain. I do like roller coasters. Since I be getting dizzy spells sometimes, I'm kind of like apprehensive now about roller coasters. Um, but I'm a roller coaster junkie, though. And I haven't been to Six Flags since I moved close to it, which is ironic because I'm right there. I can, see, I can see Six Flags from my crib. Um, but ever since, you know, the dizzy spells, even though, God forbid, even though I don't get them as often as I used to, I still be like, is it best for me to get on this roller coaster? I don't know. So I have that in the back of my mind now. But previously, before that, oh man, Six Flags is the jam of all jams in terms of like roller coasters. Six Flags is head and shoulders above everybody else because they specialize in these real deal roller coasters. They giving you the roller coasters. Fuck all the all the themes and the, we rolling through and the visuals and the, and we got the movies and it's just decorated. Yeah, that's cool. But Six Flags is like, you going to get these thrills. You going to get the hard roller coasters. We flipping and dipping. We twirling. You're going upside down seven times in a, in a single roller coaster. We're going we gonna to have you up, and then we're going to fold you back, and then we're going to shoot you off to where it looks like you just butt-ass naked up there. Six Flags is going to give you the ultimate in roller coasters, and I'm a fan. Like Once I'm up there, I'm screaming, I'm hollering, I'm talking, I'm rapping. Voice be gone. My voice be just obliterated. When I go to an amusement park, I'll be like, man, I had a good ass time at Six Flags, yo. I had a good ass time. What we doing next, yo? What we doing next? My voice is gone. Because I'm, I'm too cool for school. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing the too cool for school on a roller coaster. I'm yelling. I'm screaming. I'm 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 having a good time, man. That just adds to the fun, man. When you start yelling and pleading and, and oh Lord, oh oh, and what's next? Don't sit next to me if you' too cool for school. I'll be like, why you ain't? Why you ain't screaming? Why you ain't doing nothing? And then we just going through the rides. But yeah. But right now, I'm kind of just like scared, if you will. Uh, was that Courtney Davis asked, what's your favorite food, TV show, or movie? It has to be centered around food and cooking. My fa one of my favorite food, uh one of my favorite food movies now is a newer movie called Chef. It's not new, like brand new, but it, it came out a while ago. But like I really that movie makes me really hungry. And it's about food. It's centered around food. It's got John Favreau as this chef who goes out on his own and, and starts a food truck and he's trying to reconnect with his son and they go on this like uh, cross country road trip making uh, food and it was just like the food was at the core of the story but it was also about father and son relationship. I I just like the merge of, of those two things and I really, I really believe John in that role. It made me hungry and it made me just like Oh, yes, food. So I really love Chef a lot. So that's probably like the first movie that comes to mind on the food tip that's about cooking. Soul Food made me hungry too back in the day. 
even though soul food was like, man, them plates would kill you. But that movie made me hungry back in the day, and that was centered around food as well. So soul food is an all time is an all time gem on the food tip. Um, and those plates they had in their mug, I was like, God dog. So soul food is up there as well. Um, we talked about Diddy already. Uh, what you think about Will Smith's interview with Complex? It just dropped today. I haven't seen a Will Smith's interview, Bilal, but I did see the trailer for Bad Boys 4. I did see the trailer for Bad Boys 4, and the trailer is dope. The Bad Boys 4 trailer looks good. Um, it looks like, even though it's the same directors from the third one, it looks like Michael Bay is back visually. Um, and... I like what I saw. Like I, I'm already in the theater. I'm just like, yo, man, sign me up. The story, the storyline seems interesting, and it was a good way for them to bring back uh, Joe Pantliano's character as the captain. Uh, so we get to see him again, even though I hate how they killed him off in the third one. Um, I don't agree with that. I'm not feeling it, but I thought it was a dope way for them to you know, bring him back into the fold. But if you haven't seen the Bad Boys 4 trailer, uh, it's out now. You can go to the Shade Room page, it's on there. You can go to Will Smith's page, it's on there. Or you can go to YouTube. But the trailer looked dope. Um, I like what I saw, so I'm excited. I'm excited for Bad Boys 4. But I haven't seen the Will Smith interview, to go back to your original question. Uh, Jarrell Thomas asks, who is your favorite director and what is a movie that they didn't direct that you wouldn't mind seeing their directorial take on. All right, Jarrell, with this question. My favorite director uh, is Steven Spielberg. Steven Spielberg is my favorite director overall. Like, there are other directors I'm huge fans of, but I feel like, I feel like Steven Spielberg is the most skilled director at several different genres of film. In terms of like, if you look at Jaws, if you look at Close Encounters of the Third Kind, if you look at Raiders of the Lost Ark, if you look at um, Jurassic Park, if you look at The Color Purple, if you look at Schindler's List, if you look at uh, Minority Report, if you look at um, Munich, if you look at Catch Me If You Can, E.T., he does... And all of these are, these genres are different. And he does these different genres at a super high level. Like if you, if you look at, he did Schindler's List and Jurassic Park. They both came out in the same year. Those movies could be, those two movies are miles away from each other in terms of tone, visuals, style. They are miles away from each other, and they are both excellent films. Same director. So I feel like, you know, Steven Spielberg's directorial skill, it, it, might, not have, it might not have the signatures of Wes Anderson or Spike Lee or even Quentin Tarantino to where you know, you know, Steven Spielberg may have done something. He might not have a, a glaring signature to his films in terms of the style or the vibe, but the fact that he's able to extract the Saving Private Ryan is the best war film I've ever seen. You know what I mean? And like for him to, to nail the color purple, you look at the Raiders of the Lost Ark and, and Temple of Doom. And then you look at the color purple and you're like, yo, it's the same guy. Like it's just so that's that's why I have uh that's why I have Steven Spielberg is like my favorite director of all time because Jaws, the movie that kicked him off, it was just like Jaws is like a horror movie. And then you go to Close Encounters of the Third Kind, it's like about some aliens coming, and it's just like totally different vibes. So it's just like, man. What can't this dude do at a high level? I'm talking high levels now. This ain't no experimental shit. Saving Private Ryan, E.T., uh, Jurassic Park, 
Raiders of the Lost Ark, Close Encounters of the Third Kind, Jaws. He has broken records and just like done some amazing shit. Now, James Cameron is fire too, but I feel like James Cameron is very, I don't know if he can, if he can really tap into like an emotional piece. Like James Cameron, I can't see him directing The Color Purple or a Schindler's List type movie. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know. I don't know if he could. You know, with with James Cameron, we need some action in there. We need some science fiction of some sort. That's 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 his vibe. That's James Cameron's vibe. But I don't know if he can. I don't know if James Cameron could do a Catch Me If You Can. I don't know if he can do that. So as dope as James Cameron is at what he does, I don't know if he's as versatile as Steven Spielberg. Christopher Nolan. Christopher Nolan is a fantastic director, but I don't know if he can get to the heart and humanity of like, you know, characters like, you know, Christopher Nolan films are very like straightforward and businessy. It's like it's serious business here. It's like, you know, it's not going it's not going to be a lot of emotion, even though he did tap into the emotional aspect with Interstellar. He did tap into a nice emotional space with interstellar memento i had no emotion on memento but i feel like with christopher nolan that was the movie that made me really connect with the heart of something in his films like uh and i'm talking about like when when matthew mcconaughey was looking at videos of his children become adults and he just sitting there just taking it and realizing all the all the time that has passed and all the all the life that he has missed with his children to see them now adults and he was just crying his ass off and it was just like that that scene right there really just it really just re- I felt that I felt it I was just like man dog I f- I felt every molecule of 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 Matthew's emotions in those moments and to me that was the most emotional I've ever been with like a Christopher Nolan film normally it's just like in 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 Inception like this is the mission yeah we we saw some emotional aspects of why Leonardo DiCaprio does what he does and what happened to his family and his wife but at the same time. It was it was it was more serious business in that movie. So now Martin Scorsese, on the other hand, he I feel like Martin Scorsese is at his best when he's doing some gritty shit. I feel like Martin Scorsese is at his best when he's on some gritty street shit, Italian, you know, it don't even have to be Italian, just gritty street shit or like even like, you know. Raging Bull, Goodfellas, um, Gangs of New York, The Departed, The Mean Streets. I feel like Martin Scorsese, he does, Casino, he does gritty well. That's that's his vibe. And so it's just like, yo, when, when Martin Scorsese is in that gritty bag, that's when he is just stellar. But I don't know, like, you know, the other... The times Martin Scorsese has stepped into like a different, a different um, realm of just like a different type of film. It doesn't always resonate, you know, uh, Kundun or like uh, The Silence or, you know, these other type of pockets that he that he has, you know, experimented with. It just didn't really register like that, like at a high level. Like I said about Steven, he is registered at the highest level with several different genres. I don't know if Martin could make that same claim. Like when he's in his gritty bag, when he's in New York or, you know, even Boston, if he's on the East Coast with some shit, that's when Martin Scorsese is like, I'm in my bag. And it's like, oh, shit, this movie's good. But when he steps outside of that, it's hit and miss. Big time. Um, Spike Lee. Let's talk Spike Lee for a second. Like Spike Lee... His initial run, Spike Lee's initial run was just, she's got to have it. Um, School Days, Do the Right Thing, Mo Better Blues, uh, Malcolm X, Clockers, Crooklyn. That that initial like seven film run 
was was so dope and it was just like you getting the black college life you getting you getting you getting life from the perspective of a girl where well, she's got to have it, a girl that's comfortable in her sexuality dating in new york then we go we go to the college life and the and the the conflict between light and dark skinned blacks the militant versus like the more you know americanized or whatever you want to call it that dichotomy within the college life and the black experience, like the college students versus the locals or whatever. And so we, we really breaking that down in uh, school days. And then we go to straight up racism and do the right thing. You know what I'm saying? The, the, the conflict and the rift between blacks and Italians in New York city. Then we keep, we keep that vibe going. Now we go into the music realm of jazz and like, you know, the conflict of artists within the same art form. And then we go into like uh, Malcolm X, which is the story of Malcolm X and like, you know, how he came about, how he transformed, what led him to the path that he was down, you know. And then we go into Jungle Fever, where it's, it's like Jungle Fever was actually before Malcolm X. So now we're talking about interracial dating in a racist world. And like, you know, we 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 breaking it down on both sides of the racism. We like we got the racist. We got the racist Italian family. We got the we got the bigoted and and and. And also heartbroken side of black women feeling like they're not good enough on the other end. So we're getting all of these different things within the same movie. And then we we go to Crooklyn, which is a family piece of just like a black family in New York dealing with certain things at the time in the 70s. You know, trying to be a strong black family, the effects of Vietnam, this type of thing. And then, you know, we go to Clockers, which is a... A cops and robbers type joint, the, the cops versus the drug dealers. So now we 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 going into this, and it's just like, man, he was in Spike Lee was in his bag, and then you know he gonna flip it and show you the diversity he can do with Inside Man. Inside Man was a fantastic heist movie, and so it was like, yo, Spike Lee can do heist movies as well. So we was all in. Now now, granted. Spike Lee got some misses though. He got some hard misses. Girl Six, uh, uh, what's that movie with Anthony Mackie? Oh, I forget the name of that movie. Girl Six was trash. Uh, she Hate Me wasn't good. Um, you know, Miracle of Saint Anna. There was a war movie. But it, it was kind of just. Eh. You know, so Spike Lee was kind of fumbling the ball later on. I did like Bamboozle, but it didn't really move the needle. And I hated Chirac. So it was like, you know what I'm saying? So needless to say, I'm, Steven Spielberg. He's the best. Now, the other part to that question was, and I'm sorry I rambled on this for a long time. I'm sorry. This was a good question, obviously. Uh... What is a movie that they didn't direct that you wouldn't mind seeing their directorial take on? So since since I picked Steven Spielberg, I would like to see I would like to see Steven Spielberg's take on the Titanic. I would like to see that. I would like to see his take on the Titanic. Um, I would like to see Steven Spielberg's take on The Dark Knight. I would like to see Steven Spielberg's take on You know what? I would like to see Steven Spielberg's take on I'm trying to I'm trying to think of a Spike Lee movie I would like to see his take on I would like to see Steven Spielberg's take on Mo Better Blues I would like to see his take on that I would like to see Steven Spielberg's take on No, nah, not do the right thing. I I don't really want to see his take on do the right thing. I didn't want to see his take on do the right thing on Malcolm X. I wanted to stay in that black bag, but but Mo Better Blues, I wouldn't mind seeing his take on that. Um, I would like to see Steven Spielberg's take 
on Raging Bull. I would like to see Steven Spielberg's take on Gangs of New York. Cause I because I know I know Steven Spielberg can get gritty. I know he can get gritty. Saving Private Ryan was the grittiest war film I've ever seen in my life. I feel like when Saving Private Ryan came out, filmmakers was like, yo, man, we we can go gritty. I feel like filmmakers was like, yo, we can really take it there. We can really take it there now. And I feel like they tried to step up the grittiness after Saving Private Ryan changed the game. They were like, yo, we got we to gotta step it up. We got to make people fear war like I was scared of war when I watched Saving Private Ryan. I know I noticed the change after Saving Private Ryan hit. And we saw we were soldiers, even even the the one Hacksaw Ridge. Stuff was getting more gritty after that. They was just like, oh, we can we can do this? All right. Um, and yes, I'm excited about Spike Lee's new movie with Denzel Washington and Jeffrey Wright together. Absolutely excited. I don't know what this movie is about. I don't know the plot. I don't know nothing. But I know Jeffrey Wright and Denzel Washington in the movie together. Oh. Sign me up. Sign me up. I want to see, I want to see Jeffrey Wright and Denzel Washington in a Devil in the Blue Dress continuation. Jeffrey Wright. No, 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 because I, I love Don Cheeto as Mouse. Never mind. Never mind. Don Cheeto as Mouse is perfection. Um, but yeah. Yes, indeed. Uh, anyway, I got to get out of here. We already an hour and 11 minutes in. I'm sorry I, I went so long on the director question, but as you can see, I love I love this shit. I love this movie shit. I could talk movies all day long. And this is this is a great continuation. I would love to have this conversation with Kev on the Ball Brothers. I would love to have this conversation with Kev on the Ball Brothers. So when we get back in the studio to record more episodes of the Ball Brothers podcast, I want y'all, I want Jarrell... I want you to bring this back into the mix. Matter of fact, matter of fact, let me screenshot this question. I'll, I'll put it in the notes for Ball Brothers because I feel like um, this will be a great conversation and get Kev excited. Um, yeah, so that's a great question, though. Great question. Yes, indeed. I appreciate y'all. Uh, thank y'all for pulling up. Patron Saints. There may or may not be a movie night tonight. I will keep y'all posted. Uh, I appreciate y'all. Thank y'all for rocking with me and pulling up and, and being in here. Uh, thanks for listening. Thanks for caring. Thanks for sharing. All that good stuff. Make sure you tell your people about Verbal Cardio and what we got building here. Shout out to Amir for his way in on the Kendrick Lamar uh, situations and all that good stuff. Shout out to Diddy. You know what I'm saying? Just when, And then let's stop forcing this no Diddy, man. Let's just keep it at pause. All right? All right. That's all I'm saying. You know what I'm saying? I want to thank y'all for tuning in to another session of that verbal cardio. I'm out.